And if you would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there anyone in the audience who is audio or video recording this evening? If you would just raise your hand, indicate so. And I see none, thank you very much. Selectman's comments and announcements. Mr. Ward, we'll start in the middle this week. Okay, I've got a couple things. First, I want to thank the Winchin and Firemen for their annual Sunday memorial service. I had an opportunity to attend that this weekend. It was really a moving ceremony. They honored those firemen who are no longer with us, those who are retired, and those who are still on active duty. I want to remind everyone that this Saturday is the summer solstice celebration at the Clark YMCA from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. There'll be fun road race starting at 10 a.m., food and craft vendors, kids games, music, inflatables, and the Winchard and Winds concert will be at 11 a.m. at the Unitarian Church across the street from the Clark Y. So there's plenty to do this Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Mrs. Salter. None at this time, thank, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Anderson. I have nothing. Thank you, uh, I have nothing at this time. Are there any public comments and announcements this evening? I see and hear none, thank you. We have no public hearings this evening. Moving on to appointments and resignations. We have before us a resignation um, from Ken Want. He is, has to resign from the Conservation Commission, regretfully. Uh, you have his letter in your packet. I'll wait for questions and comments, and if none, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. I move to accept the resignation of Ken Want from the Conservation Commission and thank him for his service to the town. Second. Thank you. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. <clears throat> Pardon me. Again, with thanks, Mr. Want. Uh, next, we have an appointment to the Library Board of Trustees, Molly Velasco. Is Ms. Velasco here? Good evening. Oh, thank you so much for being here this evening. So tell us a little bit why you felt stepping forward for this was good for you. Definitely. So throughout my life, I've been passionate about books and reading, and I started um, the On the Same Page book club with Camille Hart, and it's a cultural book club that helps like build empathy in our community and kind of introduce people that maybe aren't used to others. Um, and that's kind of how I always saw the world growing up in North Central Mass in a small town is being able to read um, and utilize the library in Ashburnham. Um, and since moving to Winchenin two years ago, really utilizing everything the library has to offer, uh, and wanting to further like help push forward the programs that we already have and kind of promote those more and get more people invested because I think the library is one of the few places that is still the only place that you can go and expect to not spend money and be able to be equitable for all people in the community. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. And I see that the Board of Trustees has unanimously voted uh, to welcome you. Um, very thorough response. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, questions, comments from the board? Madam Chair? Mr. Ward. I just want to point out that you've had a lot of volunteering time, a whole paragraph here, pretty impressive. I'm, all, I'm also impressed with your statement. I think libraries are the heart of any community. Mm -hmm. And being a former library trustee, I agree with you and I welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further for Ms. Velasco? Am I saying it right? Yes. <laughs> if nothing, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. I move to appoint Ms. Molly Velasco to the Library Board of Trustees to fill a, the vacant seat with an expiration date of June 30th, 2024. Second. Thank you, made and seconded to approve the appointment. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Welcome, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Now we have an appointment for the Historic District Commission appointment alternate. Uh, Guy Carbacero doesn't have enough on his plate that he's <laughs> <laughs> finding room for a little bit more. Good evening, Guy. Good evening, and good evening, Ms. Labrie. So please. Okay, very good. I would like to take the alternate position on the Winchin and uh, Historic District Commission. Uh, there is an opening. Uh, it's been open since actually January of last year, so it's been a year and a half there's been an opening. And uh, the commission uh, needs all the members it can have uh, so it can make a quorum. Most times, some, most people can't make it. Now, the reason I want to be on the uh, Historic Commission, District Commission, is because I have a interest in Winchin's history. I am on the board of the uh, Winter and History and Cultural Center, and uh, I have a deep interest in Winter and, and seeing it as history is preserved. Uh, preserved. Thank you very much. And uh, the commission supports your appointment. Any questions or comments from Mr. Corbisaro? If there are none, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. I move to appoint Mr. Guy Carpacero to the alternate seat on the Historic District Commission to fill the vacant seat with an ex expiration date of June 30th, 2023. Second. Thank you. Made and seconded to approve the appointment. Any further discussion? Seen and hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you very much. Next up, we have before us the list of um, boarding committee appointments that are renewed annually as of July 1st. Um, you see before you the list of um, the names, the organization, and when they will be up for re-election or reappointment, I should say, my apologies. Um, it's, I have to say it's fantastic to see Seek renewal, yes. They, w without the volunteers in this town, and we've said it many times, um, we would get so little done. Um, so I, I greatly, greatly appreciate uh, all these people for stepping up. The, the one note is that the constables, um, there's a little bit more of a renewal process, so those should be with our next agenda um, in two weeks. Questions or comments from the board? Or is anyone here uh, who is on this list and would care to speak? Okay, questions, comments from the board? If there are none, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. I move to reappoint the presented list of current members to the boards and committees specified for the selected terms beginning July 1st, 2022, and to thank the volunteers for their continued service. Second. Thank you, made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seen and hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. And again, a big thank you. Uh, next is the board's own appointments to um, four um, area um, committees. Um, at this time, I would like to hold this item until our next meeting on the 27th. If that is acceptable to the board, I will entertain a motion to pass over. So moved. Do I have a second? second? Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. We have some entertainment permits. This is my favorite part of the whole agenda. Um, first up, a special one day wine and malt beverage for Immaculate Heart of Mary Strawberry Festival on the 25th and 26th. Good evening. Well, uh, my name is Sue Polkary, and I am representing Immaculate Heart of Mary, and we are requesting approval for two permits that we submitted for uh, the outdoor event of our Strawberry Festival on the 25th and 26th, and also a one-day alcohol permit for the 25th. All right, thank you. Um, do you have already got your food service permit? So it's going to be in two special one-day wine and malt liquor licenses, Friday 24th and Saturday 25th, and then the entertainment permit. How many years have you been doing the Strawberry Festival? I don't know, a lot. Unfortunately, <laughs> we weren't able to do it the last couple of years, but so it's nice to right. be able to have it back. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. 
Questions, comments from the board? If there are none, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. I move the board approve the following permits for the Immaculate Heart of Mary's Strawberry Festival entertainment permit for Saturday, June 25th and Sunday, June 26, 2022. Two special one-day wine and malt liquor licenses for Friday, June 24th, 2022 and Saturday, June 25th, 2022, as presented this evening. Second. Thank you, made and seconded to approve. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Thank you very Best much. Hope to see you all there. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, next, we have a special one day wine and malt beverage license for the Winston Fall Festival. Is there anyone here this evening to speak to this? Madam Chair. Yes, Mrs. Daigle. The Hagemeyers did call or email me this morning and did say that they weren't able to attend the meeting. Okay. They were hoping that you could still address it. I could answer, hopefully, any questions you might have for them. All right. Thank or you, you could pass it over if you so choose. Thank you. I'm just looking at the notes. They've been in touch with the planning office. We have a rough sketch of the plan questions or comments from the board or what is the uh, pleasure of the board uh, on Madam this Chair, application mr ward i just have one question looking at the sketch it looks like the food station is going to be along the gfa building then there's going to be the bar and then the tables will be set up in front of the dry cleaners i just want to make sure the dry cleaners and everybody else has given their okay on this. Do we have an answer to that? Mr. Croto. So that section's technically not the dry cleaners parking lot. That is East Grove Street. Um, this, what they have for a diagram is exactly what we did last year. Okay. So that's town property, not um, their property, neither GFA or the dry cleaners. Just as a courtesy, I would always go to the business to let them know what's coming. Last year, the uh, dry cleaner shut down for the day because obviously you can't bring traffic on Central Street. Right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, there are no de issues from department heads. Fee has been paid. Tip certified servers. Anything further? Questions or comments from the board? If there are none, I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. I move to approve two special one-day malt licenses for October 21st and October 22nd, 2022 for Melissa Hagemeyer of the Harbor Restaurant for Fall Festival to be held on October 22nd, 2022, with the location being between the GFA and laundromat in the Clark Memorial's YMCA parking lot off Central Street, as presented this evening. Second. Thank you. Made and seconded to approve. Any discussion? Seen and hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. And the chair will vote aye. If you would relay that to them, Mrs. Daigle, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. We have a mobile vendor permit. Uh, Kim Capone, DBA Capones. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. So I'm just hoping to continue my uh, permit at the station at Grout Park for Capone's food trailer. All right. Thank you. Um, according to the notes, you're looking to be Saturday 11 a.m. to 7 and Sunday 11 to 6. Correct. Okay. Great. Um, do, do, do. You'll be using Lickety Splits Kitchen. Um, questions, comments from the board? Madam Chair? Yes, Mrs. Anderson. Just out of curiosity, it seems that you were very well received in town last year. Yes. That a, a lot of people really, you know, took time to rave about get, stopping by there. And, and uh, so I'm really pleased that you're looking to come back. Oh, again. I appreciate that. Thank you. Anything further from the board? If there's nothing, I will entertain a motion. Oh, you're going to make me, I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> <laughs> Are you open tonight? <laughs> I am not. 
Uh, let's do a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. I move to approve the mobile vendor permit for Kim Capone doing business as Capone's to be located at the intersection of Glen Allen and Spring Streets, Grout Park parking lot with the hours to be Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sundays, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. as presented this evening. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seen and hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. You're welcome. Best of luck. <laughs> now we have another mobile vendor permit request from Piper's Mobile Kitchen. Good evening, sir. So I'm looking to us. Uh, I'm sorry, for the record, just state your name, please. Oh, my name is William Piper. And um, I'm looking to get a mobile vending permit. Um, I'm currently asking businesses around to use their locations to uh, set up the uh, card at. Uh, I'm currently pending uh, approval at the GFA lot and the uh, flower shop across the street. OK. So this. Are you looking for just one location, or do you think you'll be moving around during the um, I'm hoping for one location, but okay. if, if need be, I'd, I'd like to get multiple. That way, if something happens, I can kind of move to another location. I know I, with the Autumn Festival, I won't be able to set up on Central Street, so. Right. You'll have that al an alternative spot? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Oh, more food. Mm. <laughs> um, okay. One question I had, and it was touched on a little bit earlier, Mr. Saltzbeck, that, that parking lot at the GFA. Mr. Corder, I think you said that that is actually a town-owned parking lot? That's a loaded question because you divide it in half. The half to the Clark owns, is owned by the half. The half towards the dry cleaners in the, in the bank is owned by the town. Okay. So there is a, it's I split. figured the Clark owned some of it. Okay. Yeah, according to the um, to planning and development downstairs, they, uh, the space is directly in front of the GFA and the, the dry cleaner are public, whereas everything else is the Clark. Okay, so, the, so that's the parking in the center belongs to the Clark? Yes, the center on both sides. Okay, all right. No, that's not what he said. No, it's split in half. It is. Okay. Uh, so just to follow up on it a little bit, uh, Mrs. Daigle and I had a conversation about this today, and what we landed on was if it's the determination that it's town property, then we would have to, separate of this, go through an RFP process similar to what we have down at um, Grout Park. We'd have to publicly open the opportunity for other food trucks to provide proposals for using the town property. Um, so if the, if the opportunity arises to go across the street, uh, that may be a less um, sticky direction to go. Okay, so that's, that's something we're looking into? Mm. Okay, for clarification, that would be good, okay. Okay, Madam Chair, yes. so can I ask, knowing that if, if he sets up on town property, and we, we've given him already the permit, and, and we haven't gone through the proper process. So basically, what that would look like would be that um, there would be the, the permit in hand to run the business, but there's not permission from the owner of the property. So those, it's kind of two separate pieces. So the town would have to provide permission, um, even if they're licensed to go there. And so I think part of the discussion that Mrs. Daigle and I had today was if the board were to approve this, it would have to be contingent upon securing um, approvals to have a spot somewhere downtown. And how does that area differ from Grout Park? I'm not sure I understand the okay. question. Where, like we just uh, approved Capone's, mm -hmm. that's town property, correct? Correct. Okay. So have we, why is that property already we could permit that. Oh, it, there this, is, another I understand. Um, there is a pre-existing agreement with an opportunity to extend in place 
with Capone's, okay. um, which I believe this is the last year of the extension, if, if I'm recalling correctly. And so we'll have to go through that process again for next summer for the spot down at uh, Grout Park. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, do you. Does it make sense? Yes. William. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, questions, comments. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. So we really don't have a location, and do we have days and hours of operation? Uh, the days would be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, from 10:30 to 2:30. So lunch? Yes. And the agreement that you couldn't be in front of GFA on October 22nd? Yeah. During the fall festival? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Sosbeck, how long would it take for us to get that process done so that we could accept vendors for that area? If we did the RFP process, um, whatever we would need to do. By the time we actually compiled the document, we should probably put it out for two weeks to allow people enough time to respond, and then from there could be awarded the day of receiving responses. But we'd have to make pre-established criteria, and then judge the respondents based on that pre-established criteria. Okay, so that would apply to any town property. Uh, Correct. Such as, I'm, you know, I'm thinking of the new parking lot. Yeah, we're, we're effectively leasing space. Mm. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments from the board? So is there any reason why we can't hold this till the next meeting and maybe have a location by then? Not that I'm aware of. It's, I mean, it's not ideal for you, I understand, but I think it may be easier for the board if there's a, a concrete location. Um, not that it terribly changes the dynamics of the operation, but it's, it's a big question mark in terms of where it's actually physically going to be. Um, if, if I could ask the gentleman, do you know when you're going to have a determination from the flower shop? Uh, I don't have an exact time, no. Okay. Um, perhaps what we... We could request Mr. Piper to, um, if he could, come back in two weeks um, and uh, hopefully at that point have a site um, lined up. Okay. And then we can revisit then. Would that be acceptable, Mr. Piper? I can Piper? do that, yeah. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. If we could make sure that he's on the agenda again in two weeks, that would be great. Thank you. All right, we now have the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, they're prepared. Go right to the next slide. Well, good evening, everybody. It's very, very <coughs> nice to be here. My name is Jill Sackett. I am chair of the Master Plan Implementation Committee. And next to me, Nikki Nickerson and Erica Eitlin are also part of the Master Plan Implementation Committee. And we have more in the audience, Miranda Jennings and Guy Corbacero. And um, unable to be with us tonight is Amanda Phillips in Looks like Kyle Bradley, not here, okay. but, uh, pardon? Yes, Miranda Jennings. Yes, Miranda Jennings. Yes. Miranda yes. yes, yes, Mr. Ward. Okay. Just that everybody put the mic right up to your face so we can hear you. Oh. Particularly the folks that, that are watching on TV. Yes, okay. Um, very pleased to be back here. Um, we'll go to the next slide. Um, as you know, the community master plan has been six years in the making. Um, it was approved 
in uh, February of 2021, and then also the concept of using an implementation committee was approved in February of 2021. The Master Plan Implementation Committee, or MPIC as we call it, uh, was appointed in November of 2021 and officially kicked off at the beginning of this year. And we have been very, very busy since that time. So we're very excited to come back and, and to talk to you all. Um, today, um, one of the reasons we're sitting here is we're not speaking um, just to the Board of Selectmen, uh, but we're really speaking to all of the stakeholders in the audience, whether you're watching on television or going to watch it later, or you're out here in the audience today. Um, whether or not you are on a committee or a board here in town, um, you are all stakeholders in our town's master plan. And next slide. So um, for the benefit of those of you who are just catching up with us, uh, why do we even have a master plan? Uh, it's required by law, first of all, but more importantly, it's really a roadmap and a guide to the town's growth and development. It sets our priorities, it sets our policies, it informs our actions, our decisions, and so on, and our allocation of resources. So you really put it out there and keep looking at it and keep using it. It does not sit and collect dust on a shelf. It's a living, breathing document, and um, ours in particular is very ambitious and very detailed. Uh, to the next slide. There are nine action items, or action areas as we call them, in our master plan. You can see them there, all listed. Some of them are things you would expect. A master plan that talks about land use, a master plan that talks about transportation and circulation, but a little bit unique to our master plan is we've added two areas that are not typically in master plans. They are communication and engagement because that's becoming increasingly more important now, especially since we don't have very good mechanisms for communication in our town, and then community health and well-being. And we're gonna to talk to all of these different nine areas in a little more detail as we go along. Next slide. And what will it help us do? And to go into that, I'm going to hand this off to my very capable teammates here. Uh, first up is Erica, and she will walk us through some of the areas of the master plan. Hi, everybody. So I love a good metaphor. And so this master plan and these action areas, these are our compass, our cookbook, our treasure map for this community. And so what we see as the Master Plan Implementation Committee is that we are the conveners of all of the different committees to really make sure we get it done and we follow up the recipe to completion. And so with that, you know, the goal here is that we strategically sort of continue all of the great work that the town is already doing. And so to kind of kick us off, if we go to the next slide, is really reflecting on our legacy as a town. And so being able to be anchored in our town motto of working together because this is a, an ambitious plan, as Jill said. And so to kind of get into the first action area on the next slide is really about sort of looking to our legacy as a way to spark opportunities for the future. We're coming at this, you know, from 500 years of a legacy of, you know, farming and conservation. We have a deep, you know, rich history of innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, even I'm learning stuff every day in terms of the first wood thickness planer is a part of our legacy and what we're able to offer sort of the greater world. And so we are creatives, entrepreneurs, innovators, business owners, and service providers. And so as we think about this, how do we support our historic and cultural assets so that they reflect all of these different facets of who we are? Uh, and the next slide, it's, you know, it's not just about sort of the past, but the present. And so to encourage diverse land use for wildlife and community, 72% of Winchenin's land area is still underdeveloped and undeveloped. And we think that's something that is a natural and community treasure. And so for us, when we look at through this master plan, we see that there are goals that identify different action areas that are encouraging agricultural use, protecting and maintaining open space and recreation area. So we think that this is a way to preserve uh, just as we are with our own legacy. With that. Hi everyone. Um, our next action area uh, is about transportation access and safety. Um, so the, the goal here is really to improve um, 
uh, transportation access and safety to better support uh, the citizens of Winchington. Um, so, you know, we know that improved access to public transportation positively impacts the community in a number of ways. It assists with maintaining employment, um, food security, child care, and access to health care. Um, so this is a, a really uh, important goal for us to keep in mind. Uh, the next action area is to increase opportunities for economic development. Um, so here in Winchington, the top five employers for this town are um, education services, manufacturing, health care, and social services, followed by retail and food services. So the, the, um, this action area is really focused on increasing the opportunity for economic development in town. Uh, the next area is to improve access to high quality services and facilities. Um, so it's been identified um, in the Haywood Hospital's um, CHIP plan that uh, language and cultural barriers do uh, impact access to, to health care. So it's important um, for us to, to make sure that um, we're providing high quality services. Uh, this also uh, in, includes improving access to existing services, raising awareness for existing services, and improving the quality of the services that we provide. Next slide, please. Uh, our, the next action area is uh, enhancing open space. So as Erica had, uh, has mentioned, 72% of the land in town is uh, not developed. Um, so we're really looking to uh, enhance open space uh, to benefit the community. All right, and the next topic I know is spicy in this town, but we're hoping that action area related to housing is an opportunity for us to increase the variety, the quality, the access, the connectivity and affordability of housing in Winchenden. And this is really acknowledging sort of the unique populations that are living here. We see that 10% of our population is veterans, 16% of which have disabilities. And so therefore making housing accessible to those individuals who have served our communities and towns is extremely important. What we also see is that there is a rise in senior uh, senior citizens within this community and so therefore housing affordability is also being able to support people who are on a fixed income and so how do we ensure that we are being able to provide that for them what we see is that although we have a population of buildings that are you know typically younger compared to the rest of the state we see that more than 50 percent of our stock is you know been built since 1980 that's still 40 years old but you know compared to 30 percent around this state and what we also see is that 30 percent of the housing is also built before world war ii so we can do better uh, i also see that we have a 1.5 year wait list uh, for winchenden housing authority so this shows that there's this unmet need that we can start to provide and you know we could get in sort of the technical bits of acknowledging that we're not in compliance uh, with 40b which is the state requirement for the number of uh, just minimum affordable housing units within Winchenden so we have a, a legal a moral and a, just a community obligation to be able to provide that housing when we also think about this, you know, housing to me is a part of this sort of next action area, which is all about community health and well-being. Uh, I am a public health professional, and so I come to this as recognizing that our people of Winchenden are the greatest asset of Winchenden. And so with that in mind, when we acknowledge that there's this growth of female single head of households with children under the age of five, we acknowledge there's a vulnerable population that needs support. And this is something that's impacting food security, what types of services we provide, and also about social connectivity and how are we going to support both the environmental and the social facets that make Winchenden a great place to live. Uh, and so with that, you know, on the next slide, what I acknowledge is that how do we make all of these action areas possible is really thinking about the community and engagement or the communication and engagement strategies that are outlined in this action area. So we have been selected as a heart and soul community. What's really exciting about that is there's only 100 of those communities across the United States and Winchenden is the only one from Massachusetts. So this is an incredible opportunity. What we also see is that our young Winchenden citizens 
populations, they are increasingly diverse. And we have to recognize the types of communication and sort of approach that we take with welcoming new faces into this community. We also have to see that the ways that we communicate and engage everyone is not going to be the same. We are going to have to get creative uh, as we see that we have an aging population as well. And so the different tactics that we take will require listening and outreach that we probably haven't done before, but I think are critical to make sure, making sure that this this master plan is implemented in sort of its full breadth, and we catch the blind spots. What's exciting to me is that, you know, with this quote, we have an active community that comes together in times of need, hopeful for the growth of the town and kindness within. At the center of it all is the active military veteran community and pride for our country. And I think why I felt it was important to say that we come together in times of need is that this master plan is coming at a really important time in society, which is we are coming out of the COVID pandemic with different individuals really bearing the burden, whether it be food insecurity, housing insecurity, energy insecurity. And so this is a time for us to sort of course correct and really make sure that everyone has access to this type of Winchenden that we're talking about. On the next slide, you see that this is actually a really exciting time for action. I see, you know, again, when we look at the public health data, we find that we are one of the communities with the highest chronic disease rates across the state. And yet, there's also an increase in food insecurity since before and, you know, has perpetuated through this COVID time. We also see that 40% of our kids are, you know, under the age of five are living below poverty. So this means that we have this opportunity to reach out and acknowledge that that work has to be done and we have to direct resources in a different way. And so I'll turn it over to Nikki because we can't do this alone. Thank you. Um, so what I, what I really like to emphasize on this slide is that um, it really does take teamwork. So we have a number of different committees in town that are all working and they're doing really great work. Um, and the purpose of this master plan is to acknowledge the work that's already been done and to really uh, use this to bring us to the finish line um, so we can all complete uh, this work together. Next slide, please. Um, here is an overview of our uh, team. So uh, Jill, myself, um, and Erica are here uh, sitting at this table. And in the audience, um, can I please have the members of our committee stand up? <laughs> um, so this is the, the rest of our committee, so thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the next slide is about uh, our timeline. So the master plan has pre-identified uh, strategies set up across all nine of these action areas, and those are broken down into four different categories of timeline. So the baseline is sort of where we are. Um, it is our, our starting point. It is where we can recognize some quick wins. Um, next is the short term, which is zero to two years. Medium is uh, the next category and long-term is more of a, a two to 10 year um, time commitment. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to her. See, we were all about teamwork. That's why we're going back and forth. Keep you on your toes. So what's, what is this meeting about and why we're facing all of you is because really this you know, we're supposed, we're here to inspire, but we're here to also sort of tell you what we hope the next steps can be together with these different action areas. So for our toolkit that the MPIC will provide is that we're gonna provide some chapter context. So this is the data, the statistics, the information that we know is informing these strategies, maybe some of the history behind some of these strategies that are helping us do that, but we are really excited and really want to know what is everyone else's North Star? What is it that is going to move and sort of energize those different action areas? And we think that this is not something that we can just tell you. We want to co-create and understand together. And you know, with any beautiful and big vision, we have to have sort of specific, measurable, actionable goals. And so together, we are hoping that we can develop these smart goals with those different committees to be able to make sure that exactly as Nikki pointed out, we have baseline and short-term strategies that need to be implemented so that these long-term pieces can fit in. And so by starting kind of with that, we can sort of create a longer-term plan. 
And then it's just assigning action area Avengers and our next steps. And what I mean by that is on our next slide, is that you know, to this idea of teamwork, it is really about making sure that we have Avengers, so we are all superheroes in this, and being able to understand that how are we going to kind of work together to make sure those next steps are, are acted upon. And so with that, these are the action areas, and I'll turn it over to Jill to kind of take us into the next steps. Coming down the home stretch. Okay, uh, next slide. So what does this really mean, nuts and bolts? How is this really gonna look in terms of people working on this? Uh, give you a little backdrop. There are nine action items areas, and there are 153 separate strategies throughout that master plan. Obviously, we can't work on them all, and uh, we have to be very careful and pick. And as uh, uh, Nikki and Erica already outlined, there are uh, fundamental goals. There are short-term, medium-term, and long-term. And there are quick wins that, of course, we want to look at and, um, and tackle those right away. So we are going to be setting up and working with the stakeholders, the uh, committees and the boards that are named in this master plan and recommended to be leads and contributors on getting some of these strategies done. And this is our schedule here that we have proposed. So those of you on boards and committees can expect to be hearing from us in this time frame. So from July through September, we're gonna be working on the action areas of communication and engagement, and on open space, and on transportation. And then we will be rolling up reports back to the Board of Selectmen with um, what we outline for what are we first gonna start working on in that massive document. And then on through October, through December, and into January through March, you'll see we will get through all of the nine action areas um, with, with before a year is out. Okay, next slide, please. So this is a bunch of abbreviations. So uh, most of you that are on boards and committees probably know your abbreviation. But if you don't, don't worry, we will be calling you. Um, but you will see, again, color-coded. Um, the first three uh, action areas to be tackled this summer will be in yellow up there, communication and engagement, and then on over. Just to give you an example, communication engagement is actually a pretty gnarly topic here but it does involve the Board of Selectmen, the Communications Committee, IT here in town, and the town manager. And, that's, and, and I could go through and name all the rest of these, but we won't right now. Um, I will instead um, urge you to acquaint yourself with the master plan, just, just as a resident and a citizen of this town. Um, it's, it's rich, it's been really worked on by, by um, people who have just dedicated to put their hearts and souls into this thing for years. And it's an excellent document. There's a lot of meat there that we can chew on. I'm gonna go to the next slide. So in wrapping up, um, we'd like to hand out some cards and maybe our two committee members over there um, can do the, do the honors. They're right by Guy. Nice little blank colored index cards. And you can take uh, as many as you like, and even the Board of Selectmen will get some. And we're asking you, as, as Erica said, help us focus the, communities, the, the uh, committees and the boards when we meet with you. Help us focus. Why are you on a committee? What is important to you? When you go and work on your committee, what things really matter to you? You know, of all the things that you work on in a committee. Um, or answer it like, what excites you in town? What, what do you really, really wanna see changing first? Um, is there some low-hanging fruit that you think of? That you think, you know, you, you really got a, literally a blank card there um, to put what you like on there and help give us some guidance um, thinking of these three questions. I'm also going to put this out to the people that are watching on television and the people that maybe aren't on boards and committees. You are stakeholders. And trust me, these boards and committees can't tackle all of this by themselves. Um, we are all gonna be looking for other help in town. And so another thing we're asking of people when you fill out these cards is 
you, you may not have the time or the bandwidth or think that you can sign up for and be on a board and committee and put that kind of you know time and commitment into it, but you might be a very valuable asset in this master plan. I mean, no particular niche or, or skill is too small or insignificant at this point. So what we want to hear from you, um, if you're just a resident of town and you say, I think I'm interested in fill in the blank. I'm interested in healthy food. I'm interested in um, buses. You know, I'm interested in fixing our roads or any of the many, many th opportunities we have here in town. Um, and if you have a skill set or I have some history, I have some history about Winston, I've lived here a long time, or I came from another town and this is the way they did X, Y, Z, and I think I can bring some best practices in. Um, really think very broadly. Everybody in town really has a way to contribute, if you think about it. Um, so I challenge you to do that and to fill out these cards and help us help all, all the rest of the town and us as a community. And the next slide. So, for all the tech-savvy people, um, if you QR code that on the left, you put your little phones up and get that, that's just a contact form for me. Well, and I think right? what's really great about Joe. that is that yeah. if you just open up the camera, it should go straight to our town website so that you can provide exactly your answers to those three questions. So if you're watching digitally, you should be able to actually just open up your camera phone and be able to go straight to the contact us and give us the ex all of the answers that Joe right. just outlined. But if you also want to know about the master plan and get into the details and understand what were the specifics behind some of these different action areas we talked about, the uh, QR code on the right will be the one to kind of take you directly to that PDF document so you can learn more. Yes, right. So you go to that master plan, and it's a very accessible document. I talk about 158 or 53 strategies, but it's in a very digestible, organized um, reading format. So um, again, um, anyone here who hasn't had a chance to pick it up, I really encourage you to do so. Um, you'll, you'll see the enthusiasm kind of oozing out of this document <laughs> because we really, really um, want to make a change in town. And uh, we've got a really dedicated group here and we're going to lead the charge and uh, work with the rest of you. And that is our presentation tonight. Well, thank you very, very much. Um, questions, comments from the board? Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. First of all, I want to thank the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Uh, I've been through the document a couple of times. A document like that just, just doesn't happen. There's a lot of work went into that. I'd also like to thank them for one of the finest presentations I've seen since I've been a selectman. Really well done. <laughs> I noticed on, maybe I didn't see it, I saw a revised slide, because you might have changed these slides, but there was a slide that really hit home to me, and it said 65% of the population felt socially isolated. Mm. I mean, that is really sad. And I mean, that struck me as a, an area we really have to look into. With 24% feeling transportation services are worse and 11% don't have access to an automobile. They can't get to the food. And with inflation going rampant, that food is just getting out of reach. So I thank you for the work you've done. And I really honestly do look forward to these reports coming in to hear what you find. And I would encourage everyone out there Look at the master plan. It really, everything you complain about in town, everything you're happy with, it's in that plan. So really check it out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further from the board? Nope. Anything that you need from us at this moment? Mm, to rest up. <laughs> You folks have a lot of, you're named often, 
yes. in the master plan. And I have to Ed. say I appreciate as <laughs> chair of the Agricultural Commission, I'm pleased to see that you have us in the fall and the winter, <laughs> which is the quiet time right. for, for farmers. So yep. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies right. thank and you. gentlemen. All right, next on our agenda, <clears throat> we have um, Board of Selectmen minutes discussion. Uh, this is on here, um, I had requested um, that we talk about this. Um, I know a month or two ago we had a brief discussion, we, we talked about the minutes and the, the board made no changes to the way that the minutes are being done. Um, <coughs> I find them very difficult to get through because I don't recall the exact words that everybody was saying and um, they've become very cumbersome. And I'd like to just take a moment, I have Robert's Rules, uh, edition 11, there is an edition 12. Um, and I just wanna read something, this is section 48, line 26 it says, the use by the secretary of a recording device can be of great benefit in preparing the minutes. Now remember, Robert's Rules first came out in the 1800s, long before we had anything along this line. But a transcription from it should never be used as the minutes themselves. And I almost feel like that's what our minutes have become. It's become a transcription of the words that are said, everybody who's spoken, um, and I can't imagine the time it takes. I mean, I've done some transcribing work myself, and it is very time consuming. Um, and it, you, you check and you double check with the, uh, with the video to make sure that everything is on there and you have everything right. Um, so just as a, um, as a comparison, um, Robert's Rules states in, um, I've done some, there's someone else out there besides Robert's Rules, and I can't think of the name. They're not as famous as, as, uh, as this one. But it says that um, the first paragraph of the minutes should contain the following information, which is the kind of meeting, the name, date and time, and the place, um, the fact that the chairman and secretary were present or who was substituting for them. Um, talks about minutes. Then it says, the body of the minutes should contain a separate paragraph for each subject matter and should show all main motions or motions to bring a main question before the assembly, the wording in which each motion was adopted, and the disposition of the motion, which would be the, the vote, um, how that, that motion was handled. It speaks of guest speakers, and it states that the name of the subject of the guest speaker could be given, but no effort should be made to summarize his remarks. And then the last paragraph is the hour of adjournment. Now I know that, and I hope people feel that they're certainly welcome to come and address the board members. Um, my concern and my reason for bringing this before us tonight was that I think it's become burdensome the way that the minutes are being done now. It's not a transcript. If we didn't have the video, uh, the recording, um, it might be a little bit different situation. But I wanted to bring it before the board for discussion on paring down what actually goes in our minutes to make them easy to read shorter, um, highlight the people that speak without necessarily going into the minutia of everything that's said by everyone who's here at the board, um, and just make it easier for, I get lost when I read them these days, I'll be very honest with you, um, and then uh, making them easier for the town manager's um, staff to create the minutes instead of having to spend hours trying to do a transcript of them, per se. So I'll open it to the board for thoughts and, and, and questions. 
Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. So what you read out of Robert's rules, it coincides with the open meeting law, which says while the minutes must include a summary of the discussions on each subject, a transcript is not required, and the minutes should include just date, time, and place of the meeting, members present or absent, decisions made and actions taken, including a record of votes, a summary of the discussions on each subject, list of documents and exhibits, and the name of any member who participated in the meeting remotely. So, yeah, I agree. Some of these minutes is trying to put, it's, a, it's like a motion picture script, what everybody says. We don't need that. I mean, if we're all in favor of a motion, we don't need endless listing of why we're for it. Now, if one person is against it, that goes against the trend and the others are for, then maybe, yes, you do put that reasoning in because somebody stepped out different from the others. But if we're all in favor of a motion, we don't need endless dialogue in the, in the minutes. And as an example, I give a good example. The minutes we're going to approve tonight, the May 23rd, 2022 minutes, I went through and read those, and they highlight some of the discussion, but not all of it. So I would use those minutes as an example at the max of what we want in our minutes. And even that could be tailored down a little bit. So that would be my recommendation. Mrs. Anderson. Madam Chair, um, I think that we have pared down our minutes substantially over the last couple of years, quite frankly. And my concern with paring it down more is when somebody comes before the board with a concern, they want something addressed, we need to make sure that's included in our minutes. We, it needs to be documented. Um, when one of us shares a concern before taking the vote, that should be documented. Um, there, there is an awful lot of chatter that there really is no need to document it. Um, but falling back on the use of video is not always appropriate because if you go on past meetings and videos, one, I can scan a minute, the minutes, in, in far less time than it takes me to watch a video to find out if was that concern raised, was it addressed, and how. You know, um, specifically, I can think of one particular executive session minutes where I had to go back, they were released, I had to go back and look at the concern. Did I voice it? I, know, I thought I did, but did I? And yes, I did. And there is no video of the executive session Understood. ever. Yep. Um, concerns always have to be documented. They have to be enumerated and listed. And, and that's always, you know, when I have a problem with the minutes, I'll say somebody raised a concern and, and you want at some point down the road to say, I think that was raised, did we address it? And, and you know, you go back and say, well, maybe we did, maybe we didn't, but you have to go back and double check. And that can only be done by looking at the minutes. Uh, could, maybe can go easily be done by looking at the minutes. I mean, if you did sit through the uh, Which I've had to do a video. couple of times yeah, now really. to correct the minutes, to say, oh my God, to make sure. Right. You know, when somebody takes time out of their day to come, come to our meeting or our hearing, and, and address a concern, the least we can do is document that con concern. Um, and I have no problem with that. Uh, so maybe we can do something. Not, not necessarily verbatim, but say. Right, you know, this Mr. Is what X, they brought up. Mr. X brought, you know, stated this concern to the board. Right. Um, the board discussed it. You know, we don't have necessarily have to have the discussion. The board made this decision, something like that. So the issue is listed and the person is listed. Yeah, and so oftentimes we don't address that issue at that meeting. We have to hear it first and then, right. you know, do our mulling time and whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but just to make sure that, yeah, somebody came to us and brought this to our attention before. Yeah, and I, I, I agree, you know, if, if someone, 
you know, during the public um, whatever or discussion, they take the time to come before us. We need to acknowledge that and we need to make that part of the record. Right. I, what, I, whatever I, their I concern agree. was. You know, do we have to, you know, all the pats on the back and everything else that we do in the accolades? No, yeah. we don't. Um, but concerns are always, to me, their okay. top priority. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. Mrs. Um, Salter? Yeah, I, I'm fine with paring it down. I think that's a great idea, but we just need to be consistent. That's my main concern. Okay. Um, would the board um, be comfortable if I went through um, a set of minutes, a recent past set of minutes, and just kind of applied the new, um, the, the new thoughts to it, and then come back to show you what it would look like? and then we can tweak it if we feel there's not enough in there or too much in there or something? Yeah. I, I kind of like the way they do them now, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I'm, re I'm really scared to pare them down too, too much. Okay. I'm hesitant to do that. I know of other towns that that's their concern, and you know, talking sure. to somebody in, who lives in another town, not us, right. but I'll, I'll say, go get the minutes. Find yeah. out what they said, and there's nothing in those minutes. Nothing more than basic agenda, and and uh, well, you know that's not proper. Yeah, it needs a little bit more than that. I yeah. agree. So, I I would like to see okay. what you mentioned. An example of take, what we're take, talking about. Take one that's over the top, or a, there's a lot of dialogue. Yeah. Give us an example of what it would look like following the totally cut open meeting bear. law, yeah. you know, requirements. Okay. And, and then we could look at it and say, yeah, we can live with that, or we can't live with that. But otherwise, we're just talking. We all have a different vision, right. so we don't know really until we see an example. That's the level we want to go to. But I, I really want to focus on the concerns, make sure yes. we keep, okay. keep them in when somebody comes to us with a concern. All right. So if there's no objection, what I will do is I will work on that and when I have something ready, Mr. Sosbeck, I'll ask you to put it on a, on a meeting agenda, um, and then we'll get the we'll have it put in the drop box so we can take a look at it and then bring it back for discussion. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have illegal dumping and littering, Mr. Sosbeck. Can I jump into this one? Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, one of um. The first priorities when I got to town was trying to chip away at this issue and we've made some progress. The removal of blight is a priority that's listed in our master plan. Um, we didn't coordinate for that, that shout out to the master plan, uh, but it is something that's in there. And so our staff boards and committees have made what I would best describe as surgical efforts to clear out some of these items. One of the, the major concerns um, or, or obstacles that we have on our end is limited resources, and I think that goes for most issues that we have in the community. Um, and I think if we had endless uh, staff hours and endless pots of money, this is something that we could probably tackle more effectively. But in the present moment, I would probably put it in the category of we're, we're doing the best that we can um, with the resources that we have. Now, with that said, part of the conversation we wanted to have this evening was to open it up to the board and to any other members of the community that may have input to provide any um, suggestions or tips or requests, examples from other communities um, where they've seen success in trying to address this ongoing issue. Uh, it has been brought forward by some members of the community pretty, pretty regularly. Uh, Mr. Kent comes to mind. Um, through communications um, through my office and through email that I pass on to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, unfortunately, he is tied up in a Board of Health meeting at the moment, so he won't be able to, to join us. Beyond illegal dumping and littering, we've also had an increased issue with graffiti and tagging in high traffic areas, so we've been regularly painting that over uh, as a policy, usually within a, a few days or, a, or at most a week of when it appears. We try to cover it up, um, especially anything that's particularly egregious, um, just to try to disincentivize people from going out and doing this. The assumption is that it's probably, um, I hate to paint with a broad brush, but probably young adults or kids 
um, because that's what you, you typically see. We have had conversations with Chief Walsh and the Winchester Police, and they have been investigating some more specific acts of vandalism, particularly ones that involve um, derogatory terms or, or racist comments. We're trying to create a log and, and track these items because um, they're a little more serious than, than you know, the slightly more harmless tagging. Um, other initiatives in the community, Earth Day is obviously a big one, and we want to thank the volunteers that participate in that. Um, it's not entirely unaddressed, and the community does come out and volunteer from time to time, but I think a lot of the individuals um, that we see volunteering are pretty consistently the same ones, and I think they're getting kind of tired and burned out and just looking for um, some type of help or support. In this, in this initiative. So um, at this time, and I know I've talked to a few board members about this and you've had some ideas, but if you'd like to express them, um, we'll certainly follow up on them. And um, I'll work with my staff to try to execute those ideas just to try to help clean up the town in, in ways that we can and try to make, um, you know, if there's any low hanging fruit or, or higher visible um, impacts that we can make in the immediate, then please pass them on, because um, we'll, we'll take all the help we can get on this issue. Thank you. Oh, one thing that came to mind just as you were talking just now, um, I know we do the Earth Day, and I recognize that there is an expense involved um, with that uh, to the town. I don't know what that expense is. Is that 2000 Is it? Mm -hmm. OK. Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> so I was about to suggest, can we do that quarterly? Mm. Oh, my god. Um, you know, so that way the stuff doesn't pile up for a year. Um, just to, uh, if, if the budget could could handle it, um, that that would be one suggestion. Also, a hazardous waste waste collection day, mm -hmm. uh, I think, would be helpful. Madam Chair. Yes, I have participated in Earth Day every single year, and I got to tell you, I'm not really finding hazardous waste. You know what I'm finding? A whole lot of knit bottles and beer cans, bags full. Wow. Oh my word. Which frightens me to think somebody's clearly driving and whipping them out the window. <laughs> really? Um, they should put a deposit on knit bottles. I think so. Five cents a deposit, 10 cents a bottle. Because it's to recycle it, to right? return mm -hmm. it. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the year that, uh, you know, it's been a while since I've done that, but. And yet we had like I think four trash bags. Just oh my full god! Of, yeah, they are. And you're just constant. It's constant. Yeah. And in walking by, of course, I did the other side of I don't even know where we're at. Front Street. Front Street. Yeah, I know. Going I went down to Tannery Street. Hill, yeah. and uh, which I walk all the time. And if you walked it today, you wouldn't know that I'd been by two months ago. Yeah. The knit bottles are back. Are it's you like, kidding me? Yeah, and Lincoln Avenue is really bad. Oh my! You know, if you go gosh. down and around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think I've, I've read, read some articles that you know that the state or the industry is realizing that this is becoming an issue. So I don't know what they're going to becoming. Gonna, you know. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, well, they're God. finally realizing it's an issue. Let me put it that <laughs> way. Um, you know, banning nip bottles, whatever. It's it's like the K cup cups. Oh, yeah, what, those too. What a great idea! I won't have to make a whole pot of coffee. We are drowning our. Yeah. Our, our landfills are drowning in plastic cake cups. In the star, styrofoam coffee cups, whatever yes. those yep. things styrofoam come. Takes oh, my goodness. 50,000 years or whatever it is, and, too. Yeah, people should, you know what? Yeah. Don't ever confront somebody, but take your phone out. Take a picture of them. <laughs> the police should set up a hotline where we can send them photos and say, hey, um, just saw this guy whipping something out his window. Yeah, really. Anything else? Any other thoughts, ideas? Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Ward. Yeah, I agree with you that Earth Day, I mean, it's symbolic and we do it once, but we really need to do it. If we want to keep on top of this litter, we have to get out there more than just once a year, at least twice, if not four times a year, to keep up with it. And the town has to provide the bags. Whatever it costs, we need to do it. Uh, we really need to, and I don't know how you do this, because this is a difficult thing to stop, because you really can catch anybody throwing trash. It's, it's, we don't have cameras all over the place. We can't even stop the graffiti down on the bike path. Yes. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. we need cameras out there. Uh, I would also, I don't know the last time I was on the bike path is, there's a trash can sort of where you it's park. It's for dog poop. Where you park. It says dog poop only. They need to be along the way. Yeah, because I was gonna say that, Rick. Yeah, no, somebody's some picking up stuff. They're not gonna carry it for a mile till they get to the trash can. So we need more of them. Now again, that's more cost to the town because we have to send people out to pick them up. Also don't know why we don't, when I lived in Arizona, we had the Adopter Highway Adopter Road Program. And as a member of the Knights of Columbus, we had adopted a highway and every couple months we went out, the town always provided the bags, but we went out and we cleaned that highway because it, we adopted it, it was our highway. So we have a lot of residents in town who already clean their streets. I've seen it on social media, you know, and, and I thank those folks who are out there because this problem is a very small minority of the town, but they really make a mess and they have no respect or pride in the town and it's really sad. So an adopt a road program where people can fill out an application adopt their road, and they take responsibility and pride in keeping that road clean. So again, it's a national program. Yep. There's a state program. I think we really need to look into that. And different organizations in town, American Legion Auxiliary, they may want to adopt a road or a section of the highway in front of their location. But this is, this is a way to go to start anyway. Yeah, and again, get there. community involvement. This all ties back to the master plan. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Any other? I see Mr. Croto approaching the bench. <laughs> Raise yeah. your right hand. Uh, it's probably going to be that at the end. Um, so in my budget, we budget for roadside trash. Um, we use it when my guys pick up TVs, mattresses, so on and so forth. But we also use it, um, there's probably five or six different residents that pick up trash on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Some of them do it for the cans, some of them do it because they don't want winching in to look, look like a trash bin. Um, it's all appreciated. I usually get a text or a phone call and saying, hey, I'm gonna dispose of it. We take it at the DPW, we take it at the transfer station, and we charge appropriately. Um, it's not really taken advantage of in the fullest respect, so if we wanted to try something like two Earth Days a year, I can fund another dumpster for another Earth Day through my budget. Um, I think, the last one we did was about $1,200 for the budget, but that's a pretty large cleanup. We have seen a reduction in the amount of mattresses and TVs and that stuff being dumped, which is good. Um, we've, we've also lowered prices down to the transfer station on some of those items so that we're not seeing as much. So we're trying to look at it on, on our end, but um, if people want to pick up roadside trash, I have no issues buying the bags. I have no issues providing them. If they don't want to put it in their trash bin at home and they want to dispose of it, we can we can absolutely categorize it, charge it to the correct location, and and, and take care of it. Um, pe people two weeks ago picked up um, the top end of Glen Allen. My staff did the middle, and uh, another g gentleman did did the first half. Um, it looks a lot better, but again, it's filling up. What they did at the top half is they put everything in bags. I sent my guys out on Monday morning when I noticed them on Sunday, we picked up all the trash and, and disposed of it. So you don't even have to move it. They do the same thing on Glen Allen Street. They pick it up, they leave it. We send staff on Monday or whenever and pick it up. If it's a road that's not heavily traveled, we might not see it. Just call the office and we'll send the guys out. So we're more than willing to work with anybody in the community that wants to help out in that respect. Can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, just for like clarity, if somebody were moving but they didn't have a dump sticker, and could they go? They can still go to the dump. They just pay um, a non-dump sticker fee, which is cheaper than buying a dump sticker. It's like a dollar or two more per item. It's not. But but they could, and maybe yeah, we need to make make people more yeah. aware, like yeah. apartment renters and things wouldn't invest in a, in a sticker. Right. right. Um, but they often have to get rid of. Yeah stuff when you move and um, maybe, maybe that would be helpful if we made people more aware that they they can go if they don't have a sticker 
Yeah, no, we absolutely, we, we accept anybody. We don't want to turn anybody away. And I'll be the first one to tell them, you know, if they have $35 worth of stuff, to save $3, you don't want to spend $75. That's right, pretty simple. Right, and yeah. I don't want to pick the stuff off, off the side of the road. So we generally try to work with the people. So. Thank you. Yep. And I don't know what percentage of the town um, um, pay someone pay someone to pick up their stuff. You know the so, waste management or whomever. Because all those people, I don't know. I've, I've always done my own, so they, they get their weekly trash picked up. But if I have something big, will it, will those companies pick it up, or, or is the homeowner stuck trying they, to get rid of it? They also refuse. I've seen I've seen it. They refuse some articles. Yeah, and you leave. So the trash barrel bag barrels are empty, but there's still stuff on the road. On the road <laughs> is, yeah. There's been a huge, huge problem starting with trash companies pulling out because of fuel costs and mm -hmm. everything else. So if um, there's not enough residents, then they're, they're not collecting trash and they're having to find new companies or come to the transfer station. Last year, we sold over a thousand stickers, which is th the most that we've ever sold. So I'm hoping that continues to grow because if you look at the comparison now, it's cheaper to go to the transfer station than it is to hire um, a company we're not losing money. We're still we're still breaking even. So if we can continue to help the residents make a small profit and, and stay functional down there, I believe that's the direction we should go. Yeah, and and as Barbara said, make it known that even if you don't have a dump sticker, if you have a mattress or a TV or something to get rid of, you can still bring it down there. Oh, 100 percent. At a little bit, you know, dollar or whatever it is more. Yes. I just wanted to um, address your what name you were again, just, please. Uh, Sue Fulcary. I just wanted to address what you were asking about, uh, like the the trash pickup companies most as far as I know um, do allow you to leave mattresses and stuff but is a, definitely an additional cost to yeah so okay yeah similar Thank similar to, yeah. to the transfer station but but it is additional cost yeah and it's, it and is pretty hefty I'm sure it, it's, hefty. it's much more expensive than the transfer yeah. station yeah. I know for who pay because I looked up for hours and you have to you know call them ahead to let them know that it's there and yes. they'll come out oh. they usually come out like separately to get it but it's much more expensive than the transfer station even if you don't have the sticker it's more expensive sure yeah because okay it, all right let's thank your item hi hi for the record your name tiffany newton um i'm a resident but i also am part of the recreation commission and the winching community park group and recently well, the park has been for a while as kind of the program Rick was thinking they wanted to do a friends of the park of some sort that would adopt a trail and help maintain the trails at the park which is also a spot where people dump a lot of their trash <laughs> um, but i also recently had heard of some other towns who do recreational programming around town cleanups um, so as you guys were saying they do it like four times a year and it's not necessarily like a specific day it's over a couple days and anybody who wants to participate can stop in and get trash bags and all that and then bring it back to the town or wherever the location is that they do that and that's something that i um had been considering bringing up to our recreation commission because obviously it's a problem in town so i think both of those are really great ideas and that maybe um as the park and recreation are starting to work together more um, and we haven't quite formalized what that friends of the park and adopt a trail program would look like maybe we could assist in promoting such events and also possibly piloting your adopt a adopt a road cleanup sure. program sure that'd, that'd be fantastic yeah okay oh, thank you tiffany you're welcome all right uh, anything further on this uh, do we want to bring it back every couple every like once a month for a review just to <laughs> Let, let's try it could we do every other month yeah. month to okay. give, give us enough time to implement some things <laughs> oh, okay geez, come on. thank you okay and i realize we're going into our summer sessions to, mm. so um but all right thank you very much <laughs> Uh, next up, we have the town manager's report. Mr. Salzbeck, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. So just a handful of items we want to touch on. Um, we have met with our accounting team to review the expenses to date, just to keep an eye on the fiscal 22 budget as we're looking to close out the year. 
and we're preparing year-end transfers for your review at your next meeting. Um, the Finance Committee will take a first pass at them tomorrow night. On the personnel side of things, we've reposted the advertisement for our treasurer vacancy. In the meantime, uh, interim treasurer Donna Spellman has made significant progress in getting the office up to speed. There was a little bit of a, a backlog um, on some items, so we're pretty close to caught up. Um, and thank you to Zoe and Kelly for their efforts over the last several weeks. It's always hard when you're operating a little shorthanded, so thank you. Um, and I am in the process of drafting the part-time rec coordinator position, and I'm going to be bringing a draft before the board probably at your next meeting um, just to get a little bit of input and see, um, you know, what the board feels should be within that, that scope for that role. Um, so give it some thought, and if you think of anything, let me know. Railroad Street uh, will or is currently pouring sidewalks, if you haven't been by recently, and most of the granite's in. Um, with the project expected to be completed in early July. The water and sewer components of Central Street are nearing completion. Um, thank you to Mr. Croto for keeping a watchful eye on that process. He has a very good tan. Um, and the, um, an updated project schedule will be coming out probably sometime in late July, just to come before the board and give you an update of what's been done so far and what we have going ahead, um, but we're still anticipating for it to run until mid to late October. The Winston Community Park Amphitheater held an official groundbreaking ceremony this morning um, at 1030 with the Robinson Broadhurst Foundation, and most of the major clearing for the site is complete, and we are on schedule and within budget, so if you haven't been down there in a while, uh, just take a drive down and take a look. The Winston Redevelopment Authority will be hosting a walkthrough of the Beach Street properties at an upcoming July meeting just to get a, get a, get a good idea, uh, particularly for the two family, about the work that we need to do down there. Uh, BCA Associates was on the roof of Town Hall last week taking measurements for the Coppola restoration, and we expect that project to go out to bid in July to have completion before the fall. An RFP for the Beals Library restoration is set to go out for mid-July. Um, July is going to be an increasingly busy month, uh, with bids expected to be back in August, and construction will more than likely run from September through October. And just for miscellaneous uh, members of the DPW, my office and the Winston Public Schools hosted a visit from the state's Safe Routes to School program and we're in the process of working to secure grant funds to improve sidewalk connectivity throughout the neighborhoods that immediately surround our school buildings. And I was in town for the Memorial Day Parade along with some members of the Board of Selectmen, Winston and Police and Fire, and our town veterans agent, um, and many other members of the Winston community. And I just wanted to say thank you for everybody that worked to put on that event. It's um, important to take the time to, to thank our, our veterans for the work they do in the community, particularly in Winchenden, where it's such a veteran-heavy community. Um, it was nice to see that show of support. And then, just real quickly, uh, I wanted to run through the Robinson Broadhurst Foundation awards that we saw roll through. Um, of the applications that we put in, there were some items that we voluntarily postponed. So, for example, the Senior Center repairs, we knew that we wouldn't need that funding for this year, we already have the first installment in the borrowing from last year's annual town meeting. So there's no sense in tying up um, that funding, so it will roll over to next year. Um, the radio project phase two, there was additional funding that came through for that. Um, as referenced previously, the rec coordinator position was funded. Um, some items at the Council on Aging were funded. I believe it was a, a TV and a couple other tech items for the seniors. For uh, the DPW, the decorative lighting for Central Street, so just to rehash that, the state will pay for the, the base standard street light, um, but if you want anything like a municipal style, historic looking street light, it's a little bit more. So we had requested um, about $260,000. They had previously awarded, I believe, about 80, and this time around they awarded 100,000, so we're gonna have a little bit of a funding gap for that, but I'm working with Director Croto to try to identify some pot of money um, to pay for the remainder or to find a way to phase in if needed some of that lighting, so we're, we're working on a plan for that. Um, there was a fuel system project that was postponed. 
um, because it was not funded. Additional sidewalk materials and handicap ramp installations were also not funded, um, but two mowers for the cemetery and parks department were at 25,000. Um, a brush truck for the fire department was not funded at about 160,000. 5,000 towards the fall fest um, was awarded. 180,000 to Winsham Public Schools for their dual enrollment program for the Chromebook Initiative was awarded. The Winston Community Park Four Seasons Project, which provides additional funding for programming down there, was awarded at 7,000. Pull pads for elections and town meetings were awarded at uh, just over 14,000. And the Toy Town Community Partnership had requested a phase three installment for the large toy project, so like the bike down at Grout Park. Um, but they actually, they have funding in hand still for phase two that they haven't completed, and so that one um, was not awarded. So just wanted to get the board up to date on that. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Mrs. Anderson. I, didn't we just buy a mower for the cemetery in DPW like a couple years ago? How long do mowers last? Mine lasts a long time. I'm curious. The mower that we purchased is a fairway mower, so it has a 96 inch cut, so it's used on the parks, um, not in the cemeteries. The cemeteries use a, a standard 60 inch mower because you can't fit in between the gravestones. So what we just bought for 25,000 are two 60 inch mowers to replace uh, mowers that are a little over 10 years old and the lifespan's about 10. Okay. So these will allow you to get between the rows per se and, and much closer to? 100%, yeah. Stuff like that, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Then we use them in the parks when the parks are wet so that we don't sink on the new machine. Okay. Any other questions for the town manager on his report? Madam Chair? Mr. Ward. I just want to thank the Robinson Broadhurst Foundation for these donations. Thank you very much. All right, moving on. We have one set of minutes this evening. Um, it is our regular meeting of Monday, May 23rd, 2022. I'll take a moment to review it and let me know if there's any. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Saltzbrat. While you take a moment, if I may briefly, I was struggling to pull this up, but I just wanted to reference also real quick that the town manager annual appointments are up um, for renewals. So I just wanted to let the public know um, that these roles listed here um, are appointed by my office. If anybody has any interest to please reach out and we'll be putting a finalized list out at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, sorry. That was too quick off the mark. <laughs> All right, back to the minutes. Questions, comments, changes, or motion? Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. I move to approve the Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes of Monday, May 23rd, 2022 as presented. Second. Thank you, made and second to approve. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Uh, our next regular meeting is going to be two weeks from tonight, which is the 27th. Yes, 27th, thank you. 627. Uh, and we do have an executive session for us this evening. So I'll let you turn a motion. Madam Chair. Mr. Ward. Everybody bear with me with my laryngitis. <laughs> and I would like to make a statement after I read these. Okay. Before we go into exec executive session? Yes. yes. Okay. I move to enter into an executive session 13.1 under exemption number three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares and to return to open session only to adjourn subject being the international brotherhood of police officers local 538 contract discussion i so declare and for executive session number 13.2 under exemption number three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares 
to return to open session only to adjourn, subject being the AFSCME Council 93 Local 1717 Dispatch Contract Discussion. I so declare. And for executive session number 13.3 under exemption number three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares to return to open session only to adjourn, subject being all bargaining units, compensation discussion, Juneteenth discussion, health insurance MOA discussion. I so declare. Second. The okay, so motion has been made and seconded to enter into executive session. Any discussion? I just want to point out that even though my adult son is not a member of the local dispatch or no contracted member of that organization, he works in Keene as a dispatcher and whenever they have an availability, they can't fill a slot, he will come down and help fill that slot. So I will be recusing myself from any voting or discussion on number 13.2 dispatch contract discussions. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Ward. So noted. Uh, roll call to go to executive session. Mrs. Salter. Aye. Mr. Ward. Aye. Mrs. Anderson. Aye. And uh, chair votes aye. We are in executive session at 8 p.m.